Hi, so this video is going to show you how to make a whelping box for a pregnant dog to have her puppies in. And this is the box that we made. So here is our supply list, so everything that you'll need to make the box, including all of the measurements for the plastic and the PVC pipes, and all of the tools we used. So here we have all our supplies set up to start making the cuts. So you're going to want to mark halfway at 48 inches for the first cut. And then you're going to go to the other side and mark 40 inches on that side as well. All right, so now that we cut that, we have our four by fours, and now we're going to make these into two by fours. So now we're going to turn these into two by four. So mark at 24, the halfway point, and then that's where you're going to cut down the middle. So then here is the cut we made. And now we have our four by foot panels. So once again, in this video, we're making two whelping boxes. So there's a whelping box there and a whelping box there. So now we're going to cut the interlaces so the panels are able to go together. So here is the diagram for the interlaces. So they are half an inch wide, 12 inches down, and one and a half inches from the side. So here we are making a guide for the end of the interlace, and we start with a smaller bit, and we use bigger bits as we go on. So now we made an outline and we are making the cut. And you're going to repeat this on the rest of the panels. So now we're gonna get ready to cut the mama door and when you choose which one you're gonna cut it on, you wanna make sure that it is solid at the top. So the cut is at the bottom instead of the top so it doesn't have a weak point like that one does. Um, because we want to make sure that the door will still be able to go in and the box will stay standing. So you're either going to want to choose that one or that one. So here is our diagram for the mama door. It's 8 inches from the bottom, so the puppies can't get out, but the mama can still come out. It's 18 inches wide and then 16 inches tall. And we didn't have a fancy saw to cut the corners, so we used a can to make the outline. Um, so the diameter of this can is four and a quarter, so the radius is two and one eighth. Uh, so as you can see here, the lines are all traced out. Lines. So now just cut out on that outline. We used this saw to cut the straight lines and then a smaller handheld saw to cut out the curves. So now we're using a smaller handheld saw to make sure the corners are nice and round like we want them to be. So now we are sanding down the channels to make the corners rounded so they can turn into our door guides so we can put them on the door. So we're just using this electric sander and you can see there we are rounding the corners. And you're going to want to do this for each of the three door guides. So now you're going to want to drill two holes on each end of the aluminum channels so that this will allow 
them to be attached to the door when we screw them onto the door. And the important thing here is that you're making sure it's in the exact middle of the channel so it sits nicely on the door. And there are the finished ones. All right, so now we're gonna get ready to drill it on. So we're using that smaller piece as um, kind of like a ruler to see where the middle is and so that we found the middle. So now we're gonna keep that there, pick up our drill, and just drill down to make a hole for our screw to go into. Make sure it's super centered and then you are able to drill the hole. Alrighty, so we switched our bit on our drill. We already have our screw in there and all lined up in the hole we just made. And you just need to drill that screw down. And then you're just going to want to repeat that process of drilling that hole and then drilling the screws in five more times for each of the door guides. So now that we finished our door and that we put on the aluminum channels to act as our door guides, we can come over here and just how it goes on is you line up the aluminum with both sides of the door and slide it on down and then whenever the mom needs to come out you can just slide it out like that. Alrighty so now that we are done with the boxes we are ready to make the rails that protect the puppies. So these are all the ports that we are going to be using to make the puppy rails. We have these four cross fittings that are going to be in the corners of the puppy boxes and we've done a test cut on one of them where we have this hole that is going to be used with this pipe and that's going to go in it and this is what will establish the height of the bars in our puppy box. So to get this accurate hole we use this really small bit and we kind of just make an indent in the cross fitting and then we drill a small hole. So now we switched our bit out for a slightly larger bit and we're just going to do the same thing, go over that hole we just made and drill down to make the hole a little bit bigger. So now we are ready to use the final bit. Now we are ready to drill the final hole that will allow the small pipe to go in and be able to become the feet that will hold up the corners in the whelping box. So now that we have an accurate center hole in the fitting, we need to make a hole large enough for that small pipe. So while we drill, we're going to use this long pipe as leverage because that bit is going to have a lot of torque on the fitting when you cut it. So you're going to want to have someone hold the pipe while you drill the hole so that the fitting does not rotate with the torque reaction. And now we can do a test fit with the small pipe. And. Ta da! And you're just going to repeat that three more times for the other corners. So now we're going to cut our PVC pipes to 36 and 3 8 inches long so that they can become our puppy rails. And you're going to want four of those. So here I am putting it together for a test fit. I like dynamic shots. That's why I'm moving around. And then you can 
Kind of pop them together. Yep. There you go. You want me to help you or not? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So then what happens here is that we didn't put them together tight enough. So if that happens, you can just take it out like that. And you're just going to um, tap it on the ground like that on each side. And then that will get them together more and then it will fit better, more snugly. Okay. Wow, like butter, huh? And now what we're going to do, now that we're done with the puppy rails, is make the feet of the rails that will go right under the crossfittings. So here we are marking at six inches and now we're going to cut it down. And you're going to want to end up with four of these six inch poles. Once your poles are cut, you can just slide them on in to the holes that we drilled into the cross fittings. Com. All right, let's put this thing in here. Can you do it yourself or you want me to help? Um, no. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> Baton twirling here. Fake smile. So, once you're all ready to have your dog go in, you're just going to open the door and have them go on in. They might be a little scared first. Um, so you can put some incentives in there like treats or toys. And then if you come over here, you can see that even if your puppy, even if the mom lays down, the pig rails are still wide enough so that she won't crush them. Um, but yeah, that is how to make a puppy whelping box.